But calling in for the first time tonight, you morning news fans especially will know this gentleman, Kamaka Pili with Aloha Authentic. Good evening, Kamaka. Good evening, Joe. I've always been waiting to say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, mahalo. Have you ever wondered how politics happened or took place throughout the Kingdom of Hawaii? Well, we have some for you. Now, when we're, the first thing we want to talk about is King Kamehameha. The founder and the first king of the Hawaiian Kingdom was a man who was prophesied to do this before his birth, King Kamehameha the Great. His reign ended in 1819 to be followed by his two sons and two grandsons, all who took on the name King Kamehameha by inheritance. Because King Kamehameha V failed to name an heir to the throne before his passing, the first legislative election was held in 1873 to elect a new monarch. The race was between William Charles Lunalilo and David Laamea Kawa. By a great majority vote, Lunalilo came out victorious and became King Lunalilo, the sixth sovereign of the Hawaiian Kingdom, but the first to be elected. Nicknamed the People's King, he was dearly loved by all and very popular. However, his reign was short as he passed only as being king for 13 months. Because he also failed to name a successor, another election was held, which Kalakaua would become victorious. Did you know? Now you do. I didn't know that. Very interesting. Thank you, Kamaka. Um, let me ask you, since we're talking about those kings, which were kings due to bloodline and family, and King Lunan Lilo was the first one to be elected as king, did King Lunan Lilo have any connection to the Kamehameha family? Yes. Yeah, so King Lunan Lilo was born to Father Charles Kanaina and his mother by the name of Kekau Luohi. Now, Kekau Luohi was the first niece of King Kamehameha the Great on top of being one of his wives, along mm. with his son, King Kamehameha II, as well. So King Lunalilo actually was the last monarch of the Kamehameha dynasty before Kalakaua took over. So there is a connection yeah. there. All right, what is the reign of King Lunalilo known for? King Lunalilo was m more known for trying to add more democracy within the Hawaiian government. Mm. His predecessor, King Kamehameha V, was more about trying to bring power to his office, also try to bring uh, the kingdom back to an absolute monarchy as his gr uh, grandfather, King Kamehameha the Great, had. So when King Lunalilo came in, he b tried to bring more democracy. When he first came in, he started to early write to the legislature, tried to amend the constitution. He was also known to try to uh, strengthen the economy as mm -hmm. Because of the rapid decline of the whaling industry at the time, the economic uh, depression started to take over the kingdom. And where does he rest now? He's actually, fun fact, the only monarch that is not buried at Mauna Ala, which is the royal mausoleum, mausoleum in Nu'uanu. And that had to really do because, for some reason, his mother was not listed to be buried there with all the rest of the monarchs. So he chose, as being the people's king, to be buried at Kauai Ha'o Church, along wow. with his father. Oh, wow, very interesting. Uh, just a few quick questions as we wrap mm -hmm. up. You said King Lunalilo is part of the Kamehameha lineage, so he has that blood. Um, what does the name Kamehameha mean? Kamehameha means the lonely one. So when you look at the life of King Kamehameha the Great, he definitely fits wow. in that category. Mm -hmm. Being raised, being prophesied to be king and defeat all the Ali'i before he was born, he was raised in that structure. So he was raised to learn and train how to battle. So that kind of limited him with cruising and holo holo with all the other kids. Plus, the other kids was very fearful with cruising with him in case mm -hmm. they eventually hurt him for some reason playing football or whatever right. and their lives would be put at risk so Kamehameha really was lonely in his childhood and then of course being a leader you're definitely kind of in a lonely space as you're progressing in your uh, your campaign everyone kind of just like stayed away yeah. soft hands you know don't but loved him at the right, same time. Right, right. Okay. <laughs> uh, tell us more about Aloha Authentic. We know you have segments on the morning show, but now yes. we're doing online segments too, right? Yes. Yeah. So a, a brief overview. Aloha Authentic every Thursday morning on Take Two at about 8.40 or so, so make sure you're tuning in. We ver uh, visit various streets around the islands to highlight the names mm -hmm. of the streets and bring back the meaning and the stories behind the names so we know exactly where we're walking or where we're driving on. Um, and then, yeah, we'll be posting Aloha Authentic segments on Instagram as well as on Facebook to keep in tune with the community and especially the young keiki who constantly on their phones we want to make sure that at least the education is in their eyes as well one of my favorite segments nui street nui valley nui means nui means big and then we have new 
which is coconut. New. New street, was it? New, okay. yeah. Okay. The coconut new street. and then the old. <laughs> okay, gotcha. All right. Kamaka uh, Pila, also you can catch him on the weekends doing our weather reports as he joins us today and also online with uh, Aloha Authentic and Wake Up Today. We're going to have more interesting tidbits about Hawaiian culture come to light during this election coverage throughout the evening. And Joe, we'll send it right back to you.